Isla Fisher, Gal Gadot, Zach Galifianakis, and John Hamm. At least I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing one of those names correctly. Good, good. Elbow out. And then you just kind of throw at it. This is good? Uh, well, you kind of throw good. like a girl. <laughs> but when a girl is as beautiful as you, she doesn't have to be good. <laughs> Do you mind if I skip the cravers and grip? <laughs> okay, good luck. <laughs> Maybe I should show you how to throw like a girl. Keeping up with the Joneses stars John Hamm and the others. As a couple of couples in suburban America, one of them just moving into the neighborhood. And what happens when there's more than meets the eye to that couple? It's a comedy. Are you going to laugh? Are you going to have a good time? Is it worth your dollars to go see in the theater? Here's five things you might want to know about keeping up with the Joneses. Let's start with this caution. This is one of the hardest movie types for me to review because it's just kind of bland. There was nothing I hated in this movie. There was nothing I really loved in this movie. It just existed. And with movies like that, I think your mood going into the film is going to be the primary factor in determining whether or not you're going to have a good time. Because there's nothing here. This movie is toast. If you're in the mood for toast, it can be fine. If you're not, it's just really bland and dull and you wish you would have had a better meal. This movie is toast and your opinion on this movie is going to depend on how you feel going into it. So let's start with the things I can see you liking about this movie. One of the things I enjoyed was there was a good balance of humor. Now, what I mean when I say that isn't that it was really funny, because I actually didn't laugh that much, certainly not out loud. But there are different styles of humor here that work well. For instance, there's physical comedy here, but it's not all physical comedy. There's mental comedy here, but it's not all cerebral stuff. So there's a nice combination of humor styles here, even if they don't work to their fullest. It's nice to see them mix it up. Another thing I enjoyed about this is I think it has a pretty sweet message here about the value of human beings. Just because somebody is in a more showy role, like a spy or an actor or a singer, some sort of celebrity, doesn't mean they're worth more as a human being. In the gifts, in the things we're good at as human beings that even aren't as showy as others, those are still really valuable. This movie speaks to that in, I think, a really poignant way. Okay, let's flip over to the negative things. Again, nothing I really hated, but stuff you're going to want to know. It's really obvious. You know exactly what's going on here. And if you need that mental engagement of sticking with a plot, trying to figure things out, if that's what you're used to and you enjoy, you're going to be bored here because it's obvious where it's going. It's obvious what these characters are going to do. You've seen it a million times before, and they deliver on what you know. And here's the other thing. If you're sensitive to cheesy dialogue, Get ready. There's a lot of it here. There are some eye-rolling moments, some eye-rolling lines. I don't think it permeates the entire thing, but it's there enough that if you're really sensitive to it, I think it will put you off. It's kind of a paint-by-numbers comedy, and in that way, you've seen a lot of it before and you know what to expect. Overall, I feel like Keeping Up With The Joneses is just one of those middle movies where if you're in the mood for it, maybe you'll have a great time. If not, you'll probably be bored and disappointed. I give it right down the middle at a C. Thanks for checking out this Your Movie Friend review. We'll get to the best ever challenge here in a bit. First, I want to let you know, if you want to connect more, you can click the info button here at YouTube. It'll give you other reviews. You can see how to support the channel, that kind of thing. If you want to connect with me on social media, I would love to hang out and chat there. Twitter is primarily where I do a lot of that. In fact, I do a poll every Tuesday afternoon uh, that determines one of the movies that I review, including this one. This was Audience Choice Movie this week, so thank you for doing that. My Twitter is Aaron Dicer, A-A-R-O-N-D-I-C-E-R. -E you can also follow me on other social media. Same name, same place. Uh, and if you like to do podcasts, subscribe to Sift Pop Podcast, S-I-F-T-P-O-P. You can search for it in your podcast player of choice, and uh, we do that every Friday. Have a great time talking about movies, television, uh, whatever other kind of pop culture stuff we want to do. All right, on to the best ever challenge where you name the best movie ever in a particular category also. Try to identify my choice. Let's do best spy couples movies ever. So these are movies where there's a couple in them who both are spies. I'm going to stretch it a little bit on mine because one of them wasn't a spy to start off with, and I think that's fine. But I had to choose it because it is one of the best movies of all time. And all I have to say is Mount Rushmore. That's all I got to say. 
Take a guess at mine in the comments, and the first person to get it right does get a point. As always, I'll give you five extra seconds here at the end to hit subscribe. Just click the logo right down in this corner. Little Your Movie Friend logo. You click it, and then you subscribe. And then you know when other reviews are up, if you want.